Okay, here's the final project for PLCs, and this is a four-floor elevator project. And we've got just what looks like a regular elevator, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor. And we've got all the buttons on the outside of the door, just like in your department store. And we've got some buttons on the inside, too. And um, sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Well, just remember, easy to use is easy to say. Now, the uh, thing, it's pretty easy, pretty standard, just make it run like a regular elevator. Now, the only thing is, if you're going down and somebody presses up, you have to complete all the uh, down requests before you uh, do the up request. So, if you're going down and somebody presses up, um, so if you're going down and you're going down to, and you're on the third floor, somebody presses up on the second floor, just keep going all the way down to the first floor if the first floor has a down button and you service that request before you go back to the second floor and back, go back up. And when the door opens you can kind of do what you want. You can leave the door open or you can shut it if there's no requests. Um, if you shut it you have to give it enough time for people to walk in the elevator and press the button. And uh, if there are no requests it stays at the third floor or the floor it's at. So if um, somebody's going up to the third floor and there are no other requests, that it just stays at the th third floor. It doesn't go back to any home floor type of deal. So um, that's basically what we have. And the implementation, the uh, first implementation that we have is in this floor count thing. And basically what we have here is we have a simple program and we'll reset it and we'll download the program and then we'll run it and all we're trying to do with this program initially is just to get it run up and down and part of the thing is to determine where the floors are and that's why it's called the floor count basically what we know is uh, when it starts the program it always starts it in the open door condition on the first floor now the only other information we have is this is the uh, lower kind of bottom out uh, limit switch. So we know where that is and so we know what the difference is between that limit switch and this place. Now we also have an upper limit switch and we know where that is. We can just let it run until it hits it. And then we figure that uh, it has the same offset between the limit switch and the floor on the first floor as it does on the fourth floor. And then we can kind of gauge where the other floors are because uh, they should be equally spaced. Now, where the floors are is this I5, this input. This is an absolute encoder. So this is a 16-bit number. So when we're at the first floor, that 16-bit number is a 127. And for right now, all we try to do is go up and down between the first floor and the fourth floor to try to gauge where the floors are and to close the door, open the door type of thing very simple and so all we're doing is just doing that go up and down and we also have the uh, indicator lights to uh, tell us that we are passing what floors and we got that to work and it's about all it does and so we're trying to figure out where the floors are and this will tell us like this the fourth floor is at um, the value of 30 and again the first floor is at the value 127 so that's all that this program does. Very basic um, starting point. Okay, now this is the next step in the program, and this is just to try to get between floors and be able to do that. And here we have some initialization where we have to clear out registers first, and uh, we have our car request pulse, and when we get the car request pulse, we want to know these are um, mask registers, and. The mask is basically to tell us whether we have a request and then whether it's an up request or a down request. And then we can figure out, and we're trying to stop at the right floors. So let's reset our program, download it, and let it run. Now this version here, we have to open the door before we can get it to run. But let's try going up to the fourth floor as we did before and then we'll try running between floors and so can we get to the second floor third floor back to the first floor 
and back to the fourth floor. And we also want to make sure that our lights and uh, that uh, we can run between floors and get them all situated. And we seem to be in pretty good shape. Now what we have to do, and hopefully we can show this, is um, we have to get the up-down logic correct. And what we say by that is one of the tasks is um, when you're going up, and what we'll do is we'll hit the fourth floor button, and as we're going past, physically the car is going past the third floor, we'll hit the third floor up and the second floor down. Now the logic says that in that condition, when it's past the third floor, it should go up to the fourth floor, go back down to the second floor, and then go to the third floor. And let's see what happens. So we hit the third floor as we're beyond it, and then go to the second floor. Now here, it stops at the third floor, and it should have gone to the second floor. And it should have gone to the second floor, and then back to the third floor. And that is one of the trickier parts of this, is to get the logic correct. And we will take a look at what the final configuration looked like. And for that, um, what we have is the following. This is the final state diagram. And here's what we're trying to do. Okay, we sit in the idle condition if there's no request. If there is a request, we latch that request. And we say that that's the next. We want to go where we're going next. And then we have some control logic that says whether we're going up or whether we're going down. And then both of these paths are basically the same. If we have an up request, first thing we want to know is, are we at the same floor or not? If we're at the same floor, we just open the door. And what the open door does is it opens the door, it clears that request from that floor, and then it also latches that as the last stop that we made. And what we're continually continually doing is looking at the last stop versus the next stop because that tells us whether we need to go up or down. So what happens if we have an up request? We say is it the same floor? If it's not, then the first thing we say is the next floor greater than the last floor, meaning do we have to go up? If we have to go up, we go up with the up motor and then we say, okay, are we at the requested floor? If we're at the requested floor, again we open the door and clear the register and now we make that the last stop and we keep continuing um, if we still have up requests we keep continuing until we finish all the up requests now here's the tricky part if we're going through this and the next up request is not greater than the last one it's on a floor below us then we have to switch over to the down cycle and then we have to take care of all the down requests before we get back into the up request. So it has this switchover, crossover logic between up and down, whether, and that's based on whether that request is below us or above us. And that's kind of the tricky part. Now, a couple things down here. We have to treat the fourth floor, even though it's a down button, we have to treat it as an up request. Because to get to the fourth floor, we have to go up, even though it's a down button. And the same is true for the first floor. It's an up button, but we have to treat it as a down request because to get to the first floor, we got to go down. And then we have the mass that I was talking about for the uh, registers. And um, all the requests come into this uh, input register one. And then we have a mask that says our up bits, our down bits, and then any request at all. Um, it can be either of them. And that basically tells us um, these three bubbles on top, whether we have a request at all, whether it's an up request or whether it's a down request, and that's done with masking. And so if we go back to the final configuration that we have, um, this is what it looks like, and this is all done with uh, subroutines, and that's the way it had to be. Um, so we have uh, some subroutines, we have initialization, we have the open door, we have the car control logic, we have the latch the floor request, which is basically the buttons, and then we have the next move, and that's our um, logic that tells us whether we're going up or down. And then we just have some housekeeping with the floor indicator lights. And if we, well first what we'll do is we'll reset this, so we're back at our first floor position, we'll download it, 
We'll run it, but we won't start it because we're going to look at some of our subroutines. Um, this is the one for latching the floor request. And we also turn on some lamps, um, the button lamps that says we have a request. And then uh, what we do is we keep those request latch until we actually open the door at that floor. Once we open the door at that floor, um, then we say, okay, we service that floor and we clear that request. So for the first floor, we have the button here, and then we also have the inside button, which is the inside panel inside the elevator. It's right here, um, but they have it over here so you can actually see it. And then we take it and we put them into a summary bit that says we have a first floor request of some type. And we do the same thing for the second, third, and fourth. So for the second, we have a down button, we have an up button, and then we also have the inside elevator button. And then we have the summary of those things. And that's the way it works for all the floors. Then our next thing, this is just housekeeping for the lamps. And that's the lamps above the door, above the door there. The next subroutine is for the, the uh, where we're moving next. And so the open pulse tells us last floor we stopped at. And then um, the floor requests will tell us what the next stop that we want to go in our path is going to be. Now down here we have a couple important uh, compare registers. We need to know whether we, when we're going up or down, whether the next request is above us or below us. So for instance, you know, if we're going up and there, we're at the second floor and the next up button is the first floor, well, that floor is below us. So if that's the only up request, now we need to switch over to the down cycle. And then we also have, and same for down, um, and switch over for the up cycle. And that was that crossover that we were talking about in the stake diagram. And then we also have a logic for if the next request happens to be the same floor you're on. So if you're on the second floor, and then somebody walks into the elevator and hits the inside second floor button, you don't go up or down. What you, only, what you do is you just open the door and then shut the door and wait for a more valid request. So that's what that subroutine does. Um, this one, it's just the initialization. It's just clearing things out. And here we're loading um, the all button requests, the up button requests, or the down button requests. And that's basically what that does. Now this one is the open door logic. And this one, it takes a look at all the requests that we can possibly have for each floor and then whether the encoder, which is, again, this I5, tells us the encoder and what floor we're at. And if we get an exact match and we have a request, then we open the door. And the open door logic, um, again, tells us, uh, well, it clears out the request bit. And we have some logic and a timer that lets the door open. Well, it, it has a timer to open the door for a certain amount of time, let people in, and then the door will close. And finally, we have the car control logic, which is this, is the motor control logic. And this will tell us whether the car is going up, whether it's going down, and the control bit. Now for each of the up logic, we have the summary of the request, plus we have the bit that says, um, whether or not the request is for a floor above us or below us. And it's the same for the down logic, except it, instead of being the, uh, you know, the normally open type contact or the examine if closed, this one is examine if opened. So we have the opposite logic. And then we have the car request. So if we get a request, then we have a car request pulse. And we use that to uh, initiate the process and load in our registers that we saw. The car request pulse is, if we can find it, is right here. The car request pulse is the thing that loads in our registers to tell us whether we have 
um, any requests, whether they're up requests or down requests. And then based on that thing, we can figure out whether the requests are above us or below us. And if we go, well, we're right now. Okay, so now we're ready to look at our actual program in action. And we're all ready to go. We're in the run condition. And let's try to get it through its paces. And we have to make sure that we hit the buttons, but we should be able to go between the floors fairly easily. Um, and again, what we want to do is, um, when we do this, and what we'll do is we'll do the logic with the, when the car physically goes past the third floor, we'll hit the second, we'll hit the third floor up and the second floor down. Now, if it's operating correctly, it'll service the down before it goes to the up request. And let's see if we can get this right. So we hit that as we go past and then hit second floor. So if it works, it'll go to the second floor, then go back to the third floor. And we can do the same type of logic um, when we're going down. What we'll do is, when we're going down past it, we'll hit the second floor, and then we'll hit the third floor and the fourth floor up. And it should hit third floor, fourth floor, and then get the down button. So let's see what happens. So we'll hit that one, we'll hit that, and that. We should go to the third floor, then the fourth floor, and then to the second floor. And that should work. And now what we're also going to do is, now that we don't have any, is we'll take a look at uh, some of the inside buttons as well as the outside buttons. Just try to get them all working. Um, so that was the first floor, and the second floor was an up request. And we can go to the third floor. Um, because the third floor, it... Uh, can't really tell if it's an up request or a down request, so it always just stops there. And so we can take a combination of different floors and different things, and it works pretty well. And again, we'll run past that, hit that one, and go to the first floor, hopefully, and then back to the third floor. And that is the way the elevator works, and that concludes this demonstration.